Welcome to Johnny Walker for Dummies, a beginner's guide, part two. Figured I would come back, clean up a couple things that I missed or forgot, maybe answer some of the more popular comments, and more importantly, talk about this guy. One of my favorite Johnny Walkers, Swain. All right, so here we are. The Johnny Walker for Dummies video has really been kicking off and there's been a lot of comments and so many people have let me know some of the things that I missed or forgot. Um, and there's been some good questions that are pretty basic that we thought we should answer. So I brought Drew in to kind of tee things up for me to talk to and hopefully put a fine point on that first video. That's the goal. Well, I'll tell you what, this video has been really popular. We've had close to a thousand comments and I can tell you right now, the number one asked question, <laughs> which which is funny knowing this guy because I know how much he loves this bottle. I don't know how we forgot about it. I didn't have one on my bar at the time. When we were collecting all the bottles to do this video, I didn't have any of this, so I just overlooked it. And it's, it is sad because it is one of my favorites. Uh, the Johnny Walker Swing. Um, it's really unique, obviously. It doesn't look like any of the other square bottles. Uh, Johnny Walker was a, a marketing genius. He really set the bar um, um, over the years. And so he came out with this bottle. The story is, is that that he was on a transatlantic boat from New York or to New York. We don't know which direction he was going. And he noticed that the bartender on the, uh, the uh, cruise ship was having problems keeping the bottles from falling over. They're sliding, the boat's right. moving. And he th thought, you know what, I can do something about this. So he creates this bottle uh, because it's not gonna tip over. You don't have to worry about it. Um, I don't know how much truth there is to that story. I can tell you the whiskey, it's a 40% ABV um, whiskey. It's about, about 60 bucks. It's a non-age statement, so it is probably a little pricey as far as, because you can get this black, which is a 12 year for what, 30 bucks, it's 35 true. bucks. But it's unique. I, I really like the blend on it. To me, it's a spicier blend. It definitely has a sherry influence. Yes, I'm sure they put some color in there, but it definitely has more of a sherry influence on it. There's probably a lot of cardu in this blend, which there's a lot of cardu, and I think that's kind of like a foundation exactly. for Johnny Walker. Klein Leash and cardu, kind of the, the heavy hitters on the foundation. But um, it's a great bottle. It's one of my favorite winter time sort of Christmas bottles it's because spicy. of that spice yeah. to it. Um, I'll be honest with you, it, I used to see it around a lot and then it kind of disappeared and now I've seen it back on shelves. So I don't know why it kind of went away. Maybe it didn't, it just went away in our local retail or something. But obviously we got it back. I, I have this bottle in my possession thanks to this guy after we had forgot the swing and we were definitely made aware of that through the comments. A wee he, bit. <laughs> he bought this for me and said, you know, you really need this bottle. So thank you, Drew. That's the Johnny Walker Swing. It belongs in the in the beginner's guide uh, because it is, you know, $60 bottle. It, it's affordable, it's approachable, and it definitely is different than the rest of them. All right, so Mark, that's the swing. Good stuff. Uh, we had a few more questions I'm gonna hit you up with. Obviously we know these, but just in case you didn't, this is a beginner's guide. I had some questions about what is ABV and what is an <laughs> NAS? Okay, fair enough. ABV, alcohol by volume. Um, it's how they measure how much alcohol is in a bottle. So you'll see it on the label on this one right down here on the bottom. It says 40% alcohol slash volume. Or which 80 is proof. A yeah. So in the United States, we take that ABV number, we double it, and we call it proof. So right. on our labels, you'll see 80 proof, but on, on most bottles around the world, you'll see 40%. So the higher, obviously, the stronger, the, the more alcohol. The more alcohol right. in it. Okay, yep. so what about NAS? Well, non-age statement. So we look at this whole range, and I can Ooh, tell you, couple. this is a 12-year-old. This is an 18-year-old. 15? Uh, this one's a 15-year-old. Well, 15. But then there are several of these that don't have an, an age on them. We know they're at least three. Okay, they have to be at least three years old to be scotch uh, legally. But af aside from that, we don't know how old the, the alcohol is in it. So when you see an age statement on a bottle, that says that every ounce of liquid in it, whether it's blended with others, that it's all at least that age, or it could be older. But so the red is non-age. Um, I think this gold is an 18, right? So actually blue is a non-age. That's a non really salty, you know, for price yeah. point. Um, the swing is a non-age, but so you'll see people say NAS, non-age statement, as opposed to, you know, a specific year on a bottle. And some people 
equate that to value. It, yeah, I mean, and really, they're all over the place. You're right, it has to be at least three. So if you get an NAS bottle and it's 30 bucks, it's a barely three-year-old. If you get an NAS bottle that's like blue, for example, that's $200, you can kind of say, okay, what's well, an NAS, but it's probably got some years in here of different right. years. There's probably some some old whiskey in this, but Correct. there's some young whiskey in it too. And by law, they if they wanted to put an age statement on it, they'd have to put the youngest in there. That's right. And, and they're not going to do that. <laughs> right. Not when they're charging $200 to $250 for the bottle. All right. So there you go. NAS and ABV. That's it. All right. So we mentioned the green being an age statement. It is. But here's something that we had comments on. You forgot to talk about this, and there's a reason why you forgot about it. Because at we the didn't. time, we didn't have this, and you had Island Green over right. here. And you I put it over it here, and you're like, it's travel retail only. It is travel retail only, and they are very similar. They're, they're, they're both green for a reason. So this regular 15, this regular green is a 15-year-old, and it is a blended malt. There's no grain whiskey in it. Um, a lot of people really prefer yeah. the green label mm -hmm. because of that. It's going to have a different uh, flavor profile. It went away for a little while. They discontinued it here in the States. Um, I think, you know, the squeaky wheel theory brought it home and, and they we can get it here again. Now this one you picked up because it's travel retail. That's right. I, I got that like years ago when I was on a, a cruise. But yeah, I picked it up. I never, I never saw it before either and it was a big bottle and I was like, Sounds good to me, right. but I don't know anything about it. Is it the green label? It, it is, it is, technically. It is a blended malt, so it is another blended malt, which most of these Johnny Walkers have uh, grain liquor in them. Uh, but it does not have an age statement, so we don't know how old it is. So it's an NAS. And from what people, most people say is it's the smokier version of this. Ah. Oh, if like you it. look it up on their website, you know, their marketing, again, Johnny Walker's marketing team, uh, they say something like the, the uh, whiskeys that are blended in it uh, come from the four corners of Scotland, which if you look at those four distilleries, because they actually put them on the website, it's Cardew, Kleinleash, Glen Kinchy, and, oh, Colila. Co Colila <laughs> they're, yeah. they're, they're not based like four corners. But anyway, it's neat that they tell you those whiskeys are in it because most blenders won't do that. And I'm sure there's some grain in there. Well, no, it's a blended malt. Yeah. Um, but they didn't give you the full recipe because that's actually illegal. But it is very similar. These are siblings. This one just has an age statement. This one doesn't. This one's a little more smoky. And you're not going to buy this one at a liquor store near you. No. It's going to be only in duty freeze or when yep. you're traveling. So it's kind of cool that you got one for us. There you go. Yeah. All right. So speaking of travel retail only, another question that was asked, and I don't know anything about this, is the Explorers Club collection? Well, it's a, a, it's a range, three bottle range that they're they're putting under the moniker the Explorers Club, but it's travel retail only. Okay. We have had a bottle. I don't think you remember. I don't remember. <laughs> it was uh, the three bottles that make up the Explorers Club are the uh, Spice Road, the Gold Route, and the Royal Route. We did have a bottle, a bottle of the Spice Road. Andrew picked up a bottle. I don't remember much about it. Okay. Um, and because it's travel retail and well, ain't nobody doing much traveling, uh, we, we haven't crossed paths with it. So I really don't know much about them as far as flavor profile or price point. They, they exist, yes. And when you want to get into a beginner's guide, let's be honest, everyone, Johnny Walker's got a, a million bottles out there. I mean, there's a ton of exclusive different bottlings of this blue. Yes, there is. Um, but right a beginner's guide was really to try and just put it out there, what you might see. Um, on a day-to-day -day in your local or maybe in an airport or duty-free or something. Sure. I get it, but we don't have any of them, so I didn't want to dive into the details on it other than just to mention what they are. Okay. And speaking of limited exclusivity type situations <laughs> yeah, right. here, obviously I know what the Odyssey is. That's a question. What about the Odyssey? And then also uh, King George, is that also kind of things? There's a bunch of them like that. So, But they're, like, they're kind of like the nice, expensive, Not you're not going to see these. You may see this like a total wine in their special bookshelf. Locked case up thing. behind glass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But that, those don't belong in a beginner's guide discussion. But we'll talk about them real, real quick. So, I mean, honestly, they go to the left of blue because you, you, you actually said Odyssey. Uh, Odyssey is like a $2,000 bottle, $1,900, somewhere around there. Expensive. I think it retailed when it first came out was like $1,950 or something like that. And some of those King George bottlings are $500 to $1,000 or up. I mean, those are, are I don't, rare and, and I don't see pockets. them. 
Mm. And yeah, you've got to have a high dollar to get them. Now, it doesn't mean I don't want to try them. I've heard really good things about that Odyssey, and I actually know someone who's got a bottle that one of these days I'm going to get a, mm. a pull off of it. But <laughs> those are expensive bottles that you just don't see that often. That's why we didn't want to mention them in this beginner's guide because they, they don't belong in a beginner's discussion. But you may see them, like I said, like in a total wine type situation a lot. You're going to see a few bottles, maybe like the King George or Odyssey, that are kind of nice to see. And you may go, What's, what is that? It is obtainable. Just know that it's probably going to be really expensive. These, right. what we're talking about, what you've mentioned so far, are kind of your normal bottles you're going to see. They're out there and, you know, they're affordable and you can get one. Well, I'll tell you what, Mark, this has been an awesome series. I've learned a lot. The uh, Johnny Walker for Dummies, good good idea. It was fun. I've learned a lot just researching it. There's a lot to be told about Johnny Walker and the story mm -hmm. and, and their huge range. But um, I still can't believe I forgot this one. <laughs> and I'm glad everybody called me out and gave us an opportunity to talk about it because this one is, is beloved. And uh, I'm glad I got to actually catch up and, and correct my error. But had fun with the Four Dummies series. We're still making more. So be on the lookout for other Four Dummies series where we talk about another distillery or another blender's uh, whole core range and try to educate you on what they're offering. Sounds good. Cheers. Cheers.